Hi, my name's Anita Craig. I'm the founder of Future Leaders of the World, Flow, and the Master Leader Program. And today we have with us Debbie Craig. Welcome, Debbie. Hi. Hi, everybody. Nice to be here. I've known Debbie to be this incredible adventurer, uh, both on the exterior as well as on the interior. And I know that you, you travel the globe looking looking after, you know, and out for the best teachers on the hot topics out there that really move you, excite you, and then bring that back into your work and weave it and contribute so generously to people, those things that you've just absorbed, learned, integrated, and spread through the world. And I wonder on that note, if you could just share with us just some succinct parts of your journey that has kind of led us to you sitting here today being part of this program? I've, you know, since I was a little girl, I remember at nursery school, I was always wanting to help the next person, whether it was climbing the jungle gym or being a, a better actor on, on, on our little plays that we were doing. And then all the way through, I was just had this absolute thirst and passion for learning and discovering my own potential. And I don't know what it was within me. Whenever I learned something, I wanted to share it with the next person. I think I just have this quest for finding um, opportunities for people to find more love and joy and freedom and um, energy and the ability to really optimize their potential um, in their lives with what's important to them. Tell us a little bit more, just to give us a sense of a flavor of what participants are likely to expect on their journey with you. You know, I've been thinking about this definition of a conscious leader, you know, and aligned to your program, Anita. And, you know, consciousness for me is about being ultimately aware of your inner and your outer worlds and being able to see what is enabling and empowering you to be your best self. At the same time, also being able to identify and notice when you're not being your best self. So in, in order to do that, being a conscious leader, it means you have the awareness of that, but you also have the awareness of what I need to do in terms of creating and crafting a path or a roadmap from where I am today to where I am in the future. So Debbie, you've mentioned now about your, you know, your thoughts on, on what it means to be a conscious leader and what conscious leadership means. What, in your opinion, do organizations, any organization, need to be aware of, doing, thinking about in terms of developing their leaders today? What's becoming more and more important now and more senior, I think, you get into organization is those foundational inner skills and the ability to know yourself, know your strengths, know your potential derailers or opportunities for growth, know your impact and how you come across, reality test your feedback. And I also think just learn to, what are you measuring yourself against? And I think too often in the past, we've been measuring against profit and we've been measuring against hard results, quarterly reviews. And if we can start looking at a more longer term sustainable results that builds people, teams, organizations, and communities over time, we need to find a different model. And I think we need to build the leaders who can find that creative solution and that collaborative solution and that conscious way of building sustainable organizations and communities for the future. And Debbie, I mean, such a topical subject, and we probably all start to get a little bit sick of even talking about it or, or hearing the word. How has COVID-19 impacted the world of work? And what are you seeing, you know, for, for the future? <laughs> I would love to be able to tell the future, Anita, but let me start with what we're seeing at the moment. Um, I think the biggest impact, I mean, there's a huge impact in companies needing to adapt strategically and structurally to the changes. So customer, the way customers are being serviced, the way the demands on products are needed, that's all changing. So we need to come up with agile, adaptable, blended organizational models and frameworks and, and, and employee and customer experience journeys that can actually meet the need where it's at. From a, from a personal leadership level, I think um, that ability to personalize your leadership approach to every different person and be able to engage with them at the right level whilst you're balancing your own role in your own job is going to be the biggest um, challenge that we have in the future. Mm, thank you. Tell me a little bit around, you know, this, this work, this balance and how you typically work with it and what do you see happens 
as a result from doing this inner work? How does that positively impact out there? Well, I think the, the, the most important part of being able to live from inside out is that if you're in a good space and you are calm and you are in a what we call creative resilience space as opposed to a survival stressed space, your whole brain profile, your biochemical profile, the hormones that are cascading through your body, all of those are optimizing your brain functioning if you're in the creative resilience space and build a deep emotional intelligence, but a deep understanding of how the brain, the body, the chemistry, and your emotions react to the outside world. And if you can master that internally, and you flow from that space, you will be more creative. You will be able to come up with visions for the future. You will be able to make wise decisions, even with incomplete data. You'll be able to engage at an emotional and a cognitive level with the teams that you need to work with and um, be able to collaborate across boundaries. Why specifically neurochange? Adita, we, you know, myself and, and many of my colleagues and people around us have spent many years trying to achieve potential and help people develop their potential and, and grow their talent. And, you know, we've worked on, on skills, we've worked on um, IQ, we've worked on EQ, um, spiritual intelligence has been around a while, and neuroscience has started to become more and more of a trend and a theme so I've been wanting to study that for many years. And I think what has just been an eye-opening phenomenal experience is recognizing how the brain actually physically and tangibly is hardwired when we use the right faculties and we use our imagination and we use the right brain states. What, what I've personally been able to achieve and work at a health level, work at a relationship level, work at a business level, and what I've been able to master and, and create around me and help other people do that has been exponentially different since I've understood so much more about the neuroscience and about what's actually going on. A number of months ago, I went into a mindful meditation practice and eyes closed and suddenly this vision came in front of me and it was, you know, one of those out of space shots where there's the, there's the blue earth, you know, our blue planet and you can see mother earth from outer space. And this vision came and it was in relation to, to this program. And, you know, I hadn't really given thought before then around it being a, a global program, but it became so apparent that this vision here was being given around, this is a project for the planet. It became a very apparent to me, Anita, you better get on board the mindset of global and the mindset of bringing a uh, global faculty, speakers, wisdom teachers, ensure that there's all sort of compass nodes, you know, on our planet represented on this program. So really get what you're saying there around, you know, and then the manifestation, the creation, the work, the effort, the practical steps then started to flow to realize this vision that had been given. Mm. Absolutely. And I've seen that over and over and again in my own life and in, in many people around me. If you set that intent, you pay attention with your time, your energy, your priorities to that intention. You set the heart frequency to that in terms of the excitement, the inspiration, the energy towards that and, and the belief that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And then it's amazing how you notice. And I think that's the big thing about the brain as a wonderful radar and noticing machine that you start noticing the bits and pieces of information that you need to lead you towards that intent and that vision that you set for yourself. Thank you, Debbie. And um, one final question. Is there any message that you would particularly like to convey to individuals or organizations watching this, you know, from your heart to theirs? Any comments? So, Anita, I think, you know, if we can believe and often just remember that we are amazing, powerful, loving creators ourselves and that we have the ability to make decisions and to reach out and to connect with other people and to build visions for ourselves and for the future and for others. And that often what we need to do is figure out how to let go of baggage of the past or limiting beliefs or identities that we may have picked up over time or traumas that we may have been through. And if we let those go, that inner self, that inner wisdom, that inner power and beauty just comes out and it shines and enables us to have the energy 
to be able to walk the path of our true potential and our true purpose. So good, Debbie. Thank you again for being here today to share with us this wonderful dialogue and uh, look forward to more in the future with you and for participants to be enriched through your incredible gifts, offerings, skill, wisdom, and generosity to uplift lives and, and consciousness on the planet. Thanks, Anita. I really look forward to um, our first groups coming through this program. And I know they're going to talk about it to other people. And I know that through this collaboration, um, we're going to make a big dent in the universe. <laughs> All the best to you. Thanks.